Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Cube. We are here in Las Vegas. We're kicking off day two of our live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. It's two days back to back, wall to wall coverage. Lots of great guests, banking executives, uh, healthcare executives, people from bottlers and, and other retailers. I'm Rebecca Knight alongside Dave Vellante, my co-host and analyst. We are both just fresh from the keynotes. Uh, Bobby Patrick and Mary Tetlow, of course, as the MCs of the, of the event, but we also just heard from Craig LeClaire of Forrester Research, who has a new book out. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. You I think? just want to talk about last night. No, that's actually, you're right. Earth, you're wind, right. and fire. Was, right. like, they were on fire. I was so <laughs> impressed. Guys, Earth, wind, and fire? Come on, they were The they, crew is whooping it up for, for those I mean, at like, home. If you like to funkify, you know, if you like that kind of music, horns, you know, I, I felt cool just being near those guys. Yeah. Didn't they, you know what I mean? It was just like coolness emanated throughout the day. They were having so much fun. What a great choice of a band by, I presume, Mary. Mary Tyler was right behind Mary. She was on the dance floor all night. Just, she said, yeah. you know, I, I had a problem. I couldn't sit still. And that was true. Uh, I was just really thrilled because that's that's my. Kind that's of your music. jam. That's your jam. That is definitely my kind of music. Yes. Our power and funkify with uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And there were three original band members there, and they were tight. They were really, really tight. I mean, those guys are in their 70s, and uh, they had 12 of them up on stage. One white dude who was he was getting into it. It was fantastic I and mean, yeah. really awesome. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. hey, the UiPath they they throw a great party. They do. They, they do, do indeed. And uh, I like that they have their um, the concert, uh, you know, big event on Tuesday night. Yeah. During, uh, the the event, so you can you can attend because you know I'm always getting out of here on a red eye, and uh, you know customers, yeah, they like to keep people here, but it's really good I think that they do that during the event. HBE does that too. It's energizing yeah. because it be, and then it gives people this shared experience of, of fun and excitement. And I think that that, that it, that's a really good point that to make it while, while the show is still going on, Hey, we're here to have fun. And, and they don't start the keynote until nine o'clock, which yeah, is cool. Exactly. You know, <laughs> and, you know, we're up at four. Indeed we are. This goes. East but, um, time. So, okay. So to the keynote, so uh, Bobby Patrick, uh, I thought did a really good job this morning. He kind of laid out he said five takeaways from day one. So I wanted to sort of okay, touch on yeah, yeah. So the first one is single agents are not that interesting. I mean, we, George and I wrote about that along with Scott Hebner just recently. We really don't think, you know, single agents, single co-pilots are that interesting. We think they're pretty, you know, early days and rudimentary. It's the dial up of, of agentic, if you will. And I like this term swarm. Uh, we've used it a lot. I've used it a lot personally. Uh, um, he said he heard it, you know, around. So others are using it as well. Something that's new to me at least I hadn't really thought through it. And Daniel talked about this on our uh, discussion yesterday, Rebecca. Agents cannot be trusted. You don't want to give your credentials to an LLM. Certainly we know that. But but what's new is the guardrails, the guardians of the agents are going to be humans. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But also robots. Right, right. I thought that was interesting. And I want to test that a little bit with some of the customers. Um, but it makes sense. I mean, robots are deterministic. They you say do this and they do it and that's mm -hmm. all they do. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that you can secure them and govern them, which UiPath has shown that they can do. Um, but, it is, but it is absolutely correct that it's reliant on the security and that you can trust that these are in fact secure. Right, right. So if robots get hacked and I haven't heard of robots getting hacked. Um, so I don't know how, I mean, APIs are sort of somewhat vulnerable and and robots sometimes interact with APIs, but maybe they're pulling data. So I, I, let's poke at that a little yeah, bit. But, yeah. but, it's, but it's an interesting positioning, in my view. And then this fourth point was agentic orchestration is the conductor, the governor across agents, robots, people, models, and scale. Totally agree with that. Yeah. UiPath's building out an agent control framework, uh, which is, I think, a very high value piece of real estate. And then for UiPath pro devs, automation devs, and citizen devs will give a seamless transition don't really love that word seamless. That's going to overuse. <laughs> seamless transition to build agents. Agent builder lands in 45 days. So that's cool. It's not like next year at forward. Right. Eight we'll be right, using, right. you know, we'll be called announcing GA. You're talking 45 days. So that's good. And you get started now, autopilot for everyone for free. UiPath has always done a good job, Rebecca, of having a freemium model. Prior to UiPath, you had to like, call for pricing, hey, I want to do, you know, a trial, and they'd send us an army of salespeople in and try to get commitments and arm twist you. UiPath is like, look, 
here's a, essentially a community edition. Go right. play with it. Right. They, right. That's how they won. One of the reason, reasons they won in RPA was because they had that mentality and they had a great product, but they made it really easy. In fact, I remember um, when we first heard about UiPath, we went through a process uh, uh, George Gilbert participated, Peter Burris, and I think James Kobielus, to download um, the UiPath Commute Free Edition mm -hmm. and, and get it up and running, and they right. did. They tried to do the same thing with, I think it was Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism and somebody else. And it was like we saw the full body experience of salespeople calling. And, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's set up a meeting and talk about how you can get access and what kind of commitment we're going to get. We get it. Yeah. So that right. was sort of instructive. Um, so that was good. And then, you know, Craig LeClaire, you, you brought him up. I mean, yeah. Let me ask you, what did you think of his, his talk? I mean, did it make sense to you? It absolutely made sense. I mean, he, he obviously is a great speaker. He's got a book coming out in uh, next year, Random Acts of Automation, where he described that this is really geared at the workers. This is really... It, it's explaining how AI, because this is the thing, as, as employees you hear, oh, AI is gonna change everything. It's gonna change your job. It's gonna change the future of work and how work gets done. And you just are sort of left with this, uh, uh, okay, um, what do I do? But he said that this is explaining the shifts and really about how if you are an independent worker, this is gonna, how it's gonna change your gig model. If you work for an organization, this is how your life is gonna change and how your processes that you do on a day-to-day -day basis will will shift. So I think that that, I'm excited for the book. <laughs> I guess I should say that. Um, other thing I thought about his talk, which was something that I hear a lot from you, he had talked about he sort of ended on this. What is his great prediction? He quoted Yogi Berra, predictions are difficult, particularly about the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's accurate. He said agentic process management, he predicts 27 to 28. Uh, that's when in fact we will see real, the rubber hitting the road in, in organizations. Um, he said, look, some companies are still have fax machines. They are dealing with very basic digital transformation and they're still struggling with that. And so he does not see this really happening for another th three to four years. Would he, it, yeah, I agree with him on that. In fact, I think he may be even a little aggressive for this true agentic vision. So yeah. I, mean, I think our agentic vision is a little bit more um, aspirational than what he's envisioning. I think mm -hmm. he's, you know, he, he laid out this pyramid where you know, the bottom yeah. piece of the pyramid yeah, yeah, sequential yeah. workflows, that's the basic workflows. Then you get, you know, human initiated workflows, which is kind of, you know, pre-AI, you got intelligent automation and, and bots, and then you got semi-autonomous. He said, the only real AI piece today in the UiPath portfolio was um, document understanding. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. where the most of the AI is today. Right. And then Agentic is on top of that. So I would say it's at least three to four years before you see, you know, true agentic orchestration that is going to have meaningful right. business impact. Right. And so, now beyond that, our vision is a digital representation of a business mm -hmm. where uh, you basically have a real-time capability. You're connecting to both transaction systems and systems of, of of analytical record. It's like Uber for everybody where you've got a, the real-time ability to orchestrate people, places, and things mm -hmm. represented by agents. Um, you know, with humans, yes, in the loop, but much less so than they are today. Uh, I mean, there's a human in the loop when you order an Uber driver. Well, right, right? yeah. And you've got some certain controls. Yeah. You know, uh, but the human interaction, you know, you're not, there's not a dispatcher for instance. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, there's not somebody laying out the ETA or doing, you know, pricing and sending that to the, no, it's just all automated. And so imagine that for workflows throughout an organization. So that's the vision that we've put forth. And I think that's more like five to seven years away, at least, I mean, it's gonna take 10 years to, to, to fully realize that vision, and it's going to be steps along the way. But I, I agree. I think within three to four years, the big missing. So one of the things he said was, "You're going to have eight billion people yes. that are not going to have to 
Okay, He's, I, I got the quote. Yeah, great. Uh, over the next five, 10 to 15 years, eight billion people will say goodbye to a complex web of mobile apps, sites, and databases right. as AI dissolves the friction between humans and technology. So, so that, thank you for capturing yeah. that. So what's implied in that is the database becomes invisible, and it's largely invisible today. I, I said the other day, I use databases every day, but I never touch them, I right. never see them. Right. Um, so that's cool. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it's interesting, because I sort of laid that out to Daniel yesterday. Yeah, He's yeah. like, I don't know about that. We still use command line interfaces, yeah, and yeah. you know, uh, you can't use natural language for everything. But, but what Craig's <clears throat> forecast there, his prediction, presupposes is that within Salesforce and ServiceNow and Oracle and Palantir and, and, and all these other ISVs that they don't sort of fence off their apps. Mm -hmm. So we've built stovepipes of application functionality and the history of this industry suggests that that could continue unless a company like UiPath can cut across yes. and build an abstraction layer that can work with those stovepipes, but also create incremental value on top. Now, what's going to likely happen in the near term is you're going to get, you've got such lock-in with the application mm -hmm. vendor and people are comfortable with those processes. Yes. So to, to imagine reinventing everything such that you don't even see those sort of locked in processes anymore, mm -hmm. rather you're using a company like UiPath to, to abstract those away. I love the vision. Yeah. It's, I love it too, and it's just here's not why I'm optimistic practical. about it, uh, that it will dissolve in, in the silos, because in our consumer lives, it will, because we're going to demand it. We're going to say, no, I can't deal with all these sports apps anymore. I need, I need something much more seamless. And we know the technology is there. And I think that a lot of more consumer to consumer, consumer companies are going to have to face our demands. And because we're going to then expect it in our personal lives, when we, if we go to work and we have to deal with all these different silos and, and, or, and systems that don't play well together, I, I think, I think I'm optimistic that well, there's going to be changes. Let's All right, okay, so, okay. So, um, think, you remember, you, you remember, you heard last week, Uber is thinking about buying Expedia. Mm -hmm. And the, the positive case on that is they'll build a super app. Yep. And we, to your point that you just made, right. you want a super app. I do, I okay. do. So the, the counter to that is there will be certain apps that you're still going to want to use the app. I'll give you an example airline apps, airline apps are pretty good. And if JetBlue comes up with some tile thing and they release it before the super app gets a hold of it, mm -hmm. you're going to want access to the JetBlue app. I need my status. I so, need that yeah, status. So they're going to have some functionality. Yeah. And I think the same thing could potentially happen in the enterprise where Salesforce maybe has, Salesforce maybe not a great example because they've never been terrific at integrating you know, Slack and Tableau, right, and all these right. but, but they're working on it and they're working hard on it. But, but take Salesforce or Oracle's maybe a better example where all those fusion apps, they took 10 or 11 years to actually integrate all the, you know, the Siebel and the PeopleSofts and all the NetSuites, all the other apps that they bought. You know, Charles Phillips mm -hmm. was, was responsible right, for all right. that, our friend of the cube. Um, but they, Larry insisted on, on building fusion and orchestrating those things. So. Why is that important? Because if you're inside of Oracle, you're going to have better performance, you're going to probably have better security, you're going to have certain features mm -hmm. that are always going to be better than the super app. Okay, so you're trading off the best of breed functionality mm -hmm. for that suite. And that's an age old tug of war inside the tech business and they both win. Right, so you're gonna have a market, in my opinion. The way it's gonna evolve is you're still gonna, you're never gonna eliminate those stovepipes. Mm -hmm. I think there's just a, too much uh, control by the ISVs that they can add value where the super app won't be able to. But, to your point, the market will demand greater simplicity, and for those companies like UiPath that can deliver that, 
I think they'll do very, very well, and they'll pick up a really meaningful fair share of the market. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna bring this idea to to Craig to see what he thinks. We've got a lot of great guests today. We've got many UiPath executives, of course, but also people from PwC and SAP and um, and EverSource. So I want to um, also mention. So UiPath okay. had its investor meeting. Okay, with, all right. Uh, with the the buy side, sorry, sell side analysts. I think it was yesterday, and. The reaction was positive, although the stock didn't react positively, but that doesn't mean it could have been the sentiment from the market, which is you know, finally you know, not going up every day. Um, but here's the deal, act one to act two. So what the market wants to see from ISVs like UiPath is proof that they can actually do what Daniel said last year at, at Forward, which is we are making AI an advantage for us because we have the capabilities, the underlying plumbing, I call it plumbing, that's not, not his word, but we have the underlying capabilities that we've built up for over a decade and we're going to leverage that and be a winner in AI. Now you don't see companies like uh, UiPath and they're not alone, take MongoDB for example, who has put forth aspirations uh, about, about AI. They're not automatically getting the AI uh, uplift mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like an NVIDIA. Is, right. Okay. Right. Or even to a certain extent, but these are picks and shovel companies: Nvidia, Broadcom, AMD, uh, Qualcomm. Interesting. Arm. Interesting. There's a little battle going on between Qualcomm. Arm. But it's basically those picks and shovel infrastructure. It's like Cisco during the internet days. Right. Right. Days. Those are the ones that are getting the big tailwinds, and the LLM vendors, who we have no idea how they're going to make money, mm -hmm. but their valuations are going through the roof. The market is not going to reward. Uh, uh, companies like UiPath until they can prove that they can take advantage that Act, Act Two is actually going to, you know, be productive right. for them. Going right. to drive new right. revenue growth. It's going to drive new profitability and new free cash flow. So the market is taking a wait and see, which is prudent. Um, but I think, I think there that UiPath has a really great opportunity here to turn Act Two into a really great business. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of my take on it. Okay, thing. well we're going to talk, we're going to dive into all of that and more today on theCUBE. I'm looking forward to it. Great, thank you. I hope you will stay tuned to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.